The U-Chart is a control chart for monitoring the number of defects per unit or subgroup. In this lesson, we calculate the control limits, create and interpret the control chart. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has two learning objectives. At the end, you should be able to calculate the control limits for a non-interference probability of 99.73%. And you should be able to use this knowledge to create a control chart and interpret it. This lesson is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter, we will calculate the control limits for a non-interference probability of 99.73%. And in the second, we will enter this limit into the control chart and discuss how it should be interpreted. This picture shows the relationship between the various characteristics and control charts used. The different characteristics are shown on the left and the different control charts on the right. The quantitative characteristics shown on the left can be divided into two different categories. First, the variable characteristics. These are all characteristics that can be measured. They always have a value and a unit. Examples of this would be the length, hardness, weight, surface roughness or tensile strength of a component. But we don't want to go into detail about them here. Second, there are the attributive characteristics. Those are all characteristics that can only be counted. On the right side, we have the different control charts for attributive characteristics with a white and yellow background. As you can see, there are six control charts for attributive characteristics. As already mentioned, this is about the U-chart for the number of nonconformities per unit. Let's start with the calculation of the control limits. A unit can be one component or the whole product or all parts, for example, five of a random sample. The sample size can be variable. As an example of a unit, we shall use the sample of a die cast part. Let's assume that this is sufficiently complex to be able to show numerous different defects. Two defects are shown here as an example. Defect C1 shows a blowhole on the surface. Defect C2 shows an incompletely injected tooth. Other defects could be, for example, burrs or other inclusions. The table on the right contains some information from the test planning and the test results. A random sample of five pieces was taken every day. This was continued for a total of 20 days. The parts were checked and the following defects were found. Defect image C1 was found a total of 127 times. Defect C2 125 times. The defects C3 and C4 total 120 and 121 times. Thus a total of 493 defects were found. And yes, I also realize that there are a lot of defects, but let's disregard this. However, this data is the basis for the further calculations. For the calculation of the control limits, the average number of defects per part, u bar, is required. This results from the quotient of the sum of all defects found and the sum of all tested parts. Here again the note that the sample size can be different for each sample. For simplicity, the sample size remains constant in this example. The 3 before the root sign is the quantile of the standard normal distribution for the non-interference probability of 99.73%. From the data of the tests, an average defect rate for C bar is calculated as 4.93. With the values for U bar and the average sample size 
n bar, the following values are calculated using the formulas for the control limits. The upper control limit is 7.9, rounded 8, and the lower control limit is 1.95, rounded 2. Now we come to the creation and interpretation of the U-chart. In the control chart on the right side, the number of defects in a sample is plotted on the y-axis. The x-axis scale is for the sample number. In our example, these are days because a sample was taken every day. The center line is U-bar at 4.93 and the upper control limit UCL at 8. The lower limit is 2. The values in the graph are the number of defects from our example. The formula used here for the control limits is designed in such a way that the probability of non-interference in the process is 99.73%. This means that there is a 99.73% probability that all values will lie between the control limits. The probability that a control limit will be exceeded is less than 0.27%. If such a rare event occurs, then this is an indication that the process may no longer be under control. The cause must then be found and the process readjusted if necessary. Now you can of course ask yourself why a lower control limit is needed. After all, zero defects would be ideal and should also be striven for. Very simple. If a process has managed to produce fewer defects than expected, the cause of the improvement should be found out in order to maintain the state and, if possible, transfer it to other processes. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the three most important key messages. The control limits of the U-chart for number of nonconformities per unit are calculated using the normal distribution. The non-interference probability in the process is 99.73%. This is equal to the Six Sigma range. One or more values above the upper control limit is an indication of an out-of-control process, which may then have to be readjusted. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that, take care and see you next time. Bye!